welcome to Pacific Beach Street. I'm Kalia. Talofa, I'm Sam. Malo, I'm Corinne. What's up? I'm Mike. Brace yourself for a wicked show today where I meet the author of this beautiful book, Mia Kai. And if you want to be part of our Facebook family, log on right here. And right here is the TV3 On Demand website. Today I check out music, a Japanese style with duo Alistair and Eureka. <laughs> where are you going? I am going to check out the Tongan Daolunga. Looking like that? Nah, just like this, I'm going to go see if I'm fit enough to be in the police force. Later on, I check out the latest maritime stimulator, but right now, I think I just might do that test of Kalia because I still think I got what it takes. <laughs> Where's my slow mo? Hey, didn't he say stimulator when he meant simulator? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Technology. Chasing after bad guys and breaking up fights isn't on your usual job description, except if you're a police officer. Today, we look at what it physically takes to be a cop and why that's important. So we're here to sit the police physical competency test. I'm here with Constable Hayden, recruitment officer. Kia orana. Kia orana. And here we've got Vikey, physical education officer. Now, what's the first thing we need to do? The first thing we're going to do here is a trailer push. It's a 10 metre trailer push. Go. Okay, on. shall we all get in? Yep. Of course, this is quite <laughs> heavy. Yeah, push, push, push. <laughs> a bit faster than that. Let's go. A bit faster, go on. Okay, pull up. Stop. So the next thing you want to do is you're going to get the tyre out of the trailer. So this is quite an interesting mix of activities. Who is meant to sit this test? Police applicants who are looking to join the police and also police officers who are already in the job. Sworn police officers have to do it once every two years and that's it. How are we doing, Vicky? Yes, you're doing well. So from there you're going to bring the tyre over, bring your knees and place the tyre with the in the back. Good. So your task is also to show us how to do it safely? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a certain way to do every skill. And so when we're testing applicants, it's not only testing their physical ability, but also just how well they actually um, listen to the instruction and do the task correctly. So you're doing well so far. Gee, I've got, I've got two things right. Yeah, it's good. Okay, stop there, stop there, stop there. Good work. Man, 200 metres is longer than I thought. <laughs> Is this the only test you take when applying to be a police officer? Uh, no, there's a prerequisite test. Uh, that test is just to ensure that you've got a base level of fitness. Um, then you come here, learn some techniques uh, that you might need on the job and see some of the tasks that you might have to carry out as a police officer. And then the most important thing down here is to land with two feet. Okay, so when you're landing, keeping both feet together, knees nice and soft. 10 out of 10. <laughs> and Shana, come on. It's good to see a mix of guys and girls sitting this test, yeah. hey? Why do you think it's important for police officers to sit this test? On the job, you've got to be able to think on your feet quickly and carry out tasks, which may seem mundane, but you may have to do it under stress and under pressure. So being able to react and carry out tasks correctly is really important to be able to carry out your job correctly on the street. Elegant fall I've ever seen. <laughs> and jump, up, push, 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 push. Good, good. Push up first, push up. Leave the foot behind. Leave the foot behind. Good. Now turn one hand, and you're going to fall over. Plant your right hand down there, and let the feet swing over and land. Good. Very good for the first time. How was that? Did you see that? <laughs> So, Hayden, if myself and Mike were to actually sit the test for real, what would our requirements be? Uh, around about 2 minutes and 43 seconds uh, to complete the whole course in. We'll just see how that goes. Right, uh, stand by. Go! Keep coming, keep coming. In your knees. Good work, keep it up. Good, pull and reach. Good, slot. What was my time? The time was 2 minutes 47 seconds. Oh. So that means four we're seconds. four seconds out. Oh my god. Four gosh. seconds. You did the wall twice though, which is um, pretty impressive. Awesome. Yep. Well, thank you, Hayden, Shana. Then thank you guys so much for showing us just how fit our police officers are. Man, I've gained a whole new respect for you guys and what you're capable of. You guys want better work stories? Check out this website and the number. See you guys later. See you. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. I'm mulling mangava. There's nothing to eat. Oh, Lord. Nothing! Oh, 
That's it for this $50 warehouse voucher that you guys could win by telling us what organization runs the fitness test that Carly and Mike did. Text PBS space your answer to 244 and the 50th text in wins this $50 voucher. But I'm so hungry. How was that, girl? Oh man, Kieran, I have four seconds to shave off, but other than that, I was awesome. <laughs> I'm really hungry now, though. Well, aren't you lucky that I'm gonna cook you and those two fatties in there? A big Pacific feast, but right now I need to go to the market to get some ingredients and some tips from the master of Pacific mm -hmm. food. You go now. Two years ago, internationally successful and respected chef Robert Oliver went back to his homeland of Fiji and the rest of the Pacific Islands to rediscover the art of Pacific cooking. Why did he do it though, family? Let's ask him. Everyone, meet my man Robert Oliver. Hey, hey, how are you? Now, you've been to markets like this across the Pacific uh -huh. and also into people's homes. Uh -huh. Can you tell us a little bit about the journey for you sure. creating this book? Well, I was brought up in Fiji and Samoa yep. and worked in the US for years and years and years. The book is really about uh, markets and home cooks. So it's a really a real engagement of Pacific people. Pacific? Yeah, not a chef -y book, a book that really speaks to the soul of Pacific food. What connection does food yeah. have to, I guess, Pacific identity and Pacific culture. I think food's central to everyone's identity and culture, not just Pacific. But we in the Pacific use food as our way of being with each other and as our way of sharing. Mm. So it's very central to who we are. Mm. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What are you trying to say right now? <laughs> no, no, I, I know just, how to cook it. It's I don't just, eat much of it. But it's, it's almost <laughs> impossible to be from the Pacific and not have food as one of our dominant themes. Because you are a chef. Yes. But what motivated the move to want to tell a kind of different story? I'd been working in tourism and saw that there wasn't a lot of Samoan content on the Samoan hotel menus, Fijian on the Fijian, etc., etc. And I knew that if we made a beautiful cookbook that kind of highlighted how great our food was, we'd create that experience. We've got some musicians coming on at the end of our show, okay. and I've got three hungry, fobalicious presenters back home. All right. So I'd love to wow all of them and create some of the recipes from your book. Well, we can't do a Pacific feast without raw fish. How do you like your raw fish? I like marinated and lemon juice overnight. Oh, overnight. Oh. Overnight. See, everywhere's different. That's right. Yeah. Nice. I think we're going to do a Tahitian one. We're going to Because I saw some mangoes down there, so we'll do a kawaii um, ceviche with mangoes that I found in Tahiti. You know, a lot of the original Pacific foods are very healthy. Yeah. I think that's something that people don't know about. And I'm seeing over here, the spinach here, we can make a great spinach and coconut salad. Spinach and coconut salad? Well, in Fiji, they make it with otter, which is the Fijian river fern. Yeah. But we've got spinach here, so let's use that. Look at these. Wow, these look like real Fiji chilies. Like Fiji chilies? Yeah, yeah. Let's get some of these chilies, huh? All right. So what's next for you, Robert? Did you know that there are 400 organic farms in Samoa? 400? So I'm going to be working in Samoa, creating a, a tourism product around that, right. so that the organic farms have a link to an economy mm. to sustain themselves. The deal was that you come and help me shop. Yeah. But how about we extend that and you come back to the house and help me cook yeah, some no, of this? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, very happy to. <laughs> We're back and ready to cook oh, some move over. Right. <laughs> we meet our cousin Robert. Hey. Robert, you have to go. Oh, Let me grab yes. it. After hey. the break, I check out the Tonga Taulunga. And Sammy meets musicians John and Yoko. Kivrin, it's Alistair and Yurika. Oh, oh Sammy san, Totimo Kawaii, this your name. What? <laughs> She actually called you something really nice, Sam. You probably don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> just guessing. <laughs> now we're going to let you guys take it to the break and check out some of this feedback. Oh yeah, what's up? We'd just like to make a bigger shout out to everyone in Tonga, all our family, our Baja. To all the boys and, and girls in blue who make the uh, streets a better and safer place for us to be in. Hi, I'd like to make a big shout out to all my family and a big hi to Sam. <laughs> 